Hello friends, Mike here, and my feet just finished healing from the 300 miles I walked this week at the Cedia Expo in Denver. I'm going to break down my favorite spots that I hit, the new tech I thought was pretty badass, and what you can expect from visiting a show of this caliber. I'm going to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly about Cedia 2023. Let's get to it. Just like any other event at the Denver Convention Center, parking can be a real challenge if you don't arrive early. This year, I pulled in around 8 in the morning, a full hour before the doors were set to swing open. It was a smart move on my part, as the parking situation was chaos. For those visiting and not keen on driving, snagging an Uber from your hotel might be your best bet. But if you're set on driving, there's a parking structure roughly a block and a half down the street from the convention center. It's a steal, 13 bucks for the day, and I've always found my car safe and sound there. Securing my badge was next on the list. I expected a breezy process, but found myself queued up for about 20 minutes. However, once that badge was in hand, the lobby wasn't on my radar, unless I was craving, you know, a caffeine fix from the Dazbog shop. But oh my god, that line. A solid 30-minute wait. Major kudos to the Dazbog crew there. Their coffee brewing was relentless. That line seemed ever-present. My only other business in the lobby was snagging this awesome t-shirt. Don't be fooled by the thumbnail. I actually genuinely cherish this shirt. So a big shout out to CDF for the nice treat. When I finally made my ascent up the escalators and stepped through the convention center's main doors, I was struck by a sh just the sheer magnitude of it all. Massive branded banners, illuminated lights, screens buzzing with activity. It was a sensory overload. This wasn't the 2019 convention I remembered. This year felt like double the ex exhibits, and easily triple the attendees. The space quickly morphed into a sea of polo shirts and slacks. Navigating to find familiar faces was a mission, but by the day's end, I connected with every single person on my list, and that felt fantastic. My day kicked off with a rendezvous at Sony's booth. The objective was to sample two of their premier media rooms, equipped with their latest AVRs and projectors. I met with Mara from a Sony's marketing team who was delightful and provided a thorough tour of their entire booth and set me up with VIP treatment to experience their media rooms. One thing to note, Sony has stepped away from crafting their own high-end speakers. Instead, they had paired up with Kef for their primary media room and featured monitor audio for their secondary setup. The primary media room felt expansive and well-organized. A particular highlight was Sony's new AVR, the AZ7000ES, effortlessly driving all 13 channels at 4 ohms. Paired with the Kef speakers, the sound output was impressively loud, yet retained its clarity. This is how Kef does it. However, a slight hiccup in the setup was the bass. If it were up to me, I'd have opted for SVS's PV16s to add that much-needed punch, which would have elevated Sony's main room into a must-visit zone. Lighting up the visual display in this primary space was the XW7000ES projector. Given its $30,000 price tag and the AVR coming in at $3,300, I found this setup to be a relative bargain amidst the array of high-end configurations at Cedia. The allure of Sony's secondary room was somewhat subdued compared to the buzz of the primary space. The monitor audio speakers were decent, but perhaps not show stoppers. This room showcased the AZ-3000 ES AVR paired with the more budget-friendly XW-5000 ES projector. Given its price bracket, this duo offers an ideal choice for those targeting a 9-channel setup. Certainly, it's a solid contender for anyone aiming to craft a, you know, competent home theater. I am interested in Sony soundbar since after chatting with one of the reps, I found the technology integrated in their flagship soundbar may be of interest to many of you out there. Let's see if we can work that out soon. The only other appointment on my opening day at the expo was the Bang and Aloofson, and boy, did things get wild, both in intrigue and cost. <laughs> it's hard not to wonder if this was the vision Dr. Bose might have pursued had he still been steering the ship of Bose today. Diving right in, the Biolab 90 floor standing marvels are nothing short of breathtaking. With a whopping $135,000 price tag, these speakers are more than just auditory equipment, they're an entire experience. Packing 18 premium speakers, 14 channels of amplification, 4 additional Class D amps, and an astounding 8200 watts of power, these speakers serve as a centerpiece that engages everyone in the room. The performance? Phenomenal. 
high end? Absolutely. Worth it to the right person unquestionably. B&O showcased other gems like their hospitality line and the freshly unveiled Biolab 8. While these products ooze quality, their price tags elevate them into an elite category. Candidly, offerings from brands like Sonos and other lifestyle names do stand their ground in comparison, but the Biolab 90? That's on a pedestal of its own, and it's squarely on my wish list. Someday, they will be mine. It will be mine. Oh yes, it will be mine. Day two took me to LG, and I've got to admit, the rip had this cool Elvis vibe about him. It's not every day you meet a tech Elvis, right? But LG pulled out all the stops, showcasing everything from their gorgeous OLED flat screens to their top of the line sound bars. One device that grabbed my attention, a briefcase that belongs in a Bond film called the Stand By Me Go. I would have leaned more towards a name like Slick Screen, but that's just me. It features a 27 inch touchscreen and AI Sound Pro speakers, pretty much your entire entertainment world in a carry case. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments on how you would ideally use this thing. However, the crown jewel for me was LG's OLED Flex TV. It's this sleek design that smoothly transitions from curved to a flat display. As someone who edits videos, a flat screen is my go-to, but for gaming, that cool curve is a game changer. Priced at $24.99, it feels like a solid deal for what you're getting considering its incredibly rich display at, you know, 200 IQ level functionality. It's insane. I want this thing. Bad. All in all, my time at LG was pretty fun, and their lineup this year did not disappoint. All right, before we dive into the top three heavy hitters, there are some standout mentions I've got to give a shout out to. First up, the Accurus Aragon Room, in tandem with MSE, seriously wowed me on the show's lower level. They've got this dark technology that genuinely piqued my interest. I mean, the sound quality was just immersive. It's on my list to delve more into the nuts and bolts of how that tech magic works. I caught up with my good buddy, Andrew Lindsay, over at the Martin Logan booth. He's the product manager there, and lucky for me, snagged me a demo. Let's talk value here, guys. Their room was priced at around $80,000 thousand dollars which in this context is actually pretty reasonable and let me tell you those speakers were spot on i had a blast tuning into that signature martin logan clarity they showcased their new motion series and if you've been around here you know i've already given the new motion bookshelf speakers a spin on this channel then of course there was SV the svs booth man they never let me down got to catch up with my buddy nick brown their vp of marketing and geek out over the bone rattling bass and their setup those pb16 flagship subwoofers pure eardrum joy whenever svs sets up a demo mark my words be there. And for a nostalgia trip, seeing brands like Velodyne, Carver, and Adcom was like a walk down memory lane. Some distributors are giving these iconic brands a fresh spin, and it's heartwarming to see them shine again. It felt like there was a universal agreement at the show. Seriously, everyone I bumped into was raving about the same three demo rooms. Alcons, Trinov, and Grimani. These giants pulled out all the stops. It was like watching an Avengers level assembly of the creme de la creme in screens, seating, source, processing, and amplification. Every time I spotted folks emerging from these rooms, their faces said it all. Smiles stretching from ear to ear. Alcon's audio brought their A game to the room. It felt like deja vu, reminding me of the killer setup I experienced from them back at Cedia 2019. And this year was just as impressive. The sound clips they showcase had such crystal clear clarity and just a punch that honestly you just had to hear to believe. The bass was delicious. Now, I did sense the sound leaning a tad more towards the mid-tones. This might have been something a touch of tweaking could fix, or hey, maybe it was just my seat in the room and where I was. Either way, when you pair Alcon speakers and amplification with Trinop's top-tier processing, you're in for an auditory treat. Overall, a captivating experience. Now, there was some serious hype around the Trinov room. I mean, people were willingly queuing up for an hour just to get a taste of that demo. The real showstopper was their new waveforming technology powered by a whopping 24 subwoofers and a jaw-dropping 120 kilowatts of Ascendo DSP amplification. Just let that sink in. Which 
is a lot of power. The stage was set in an 18-seat Officina Acoustica room crafted with finesse in Italy and then pieced together right at the show in Denver. They didn't skimp on the tech either. For visuals, they had Kaleidoscape handling the source material, teamed up with the Mad VR Envy for that gorgeous video processing. Their pick for the projector was Barcode's Nord CS, paired with Seymour screens for that beautiful, clear, acoustically transparent screen experience. With Trinov at the helm weaving everything together, it's no wonder this space was one of the most talked about, and let's face it, priciest rooms of the show. <laughs> I've got to say, the bass was silky smooth, harmonizing perfectly with the Ascendo audio speakers. I've always had a soft spot for Ascendo's fresh approach to speaker design. The room felt quite balanced, with sound that was sharp and pristine, and visuals that were just impeccable. It's precisely that grandeur you'd expect from such a power pack collaboration. But hang on, there was another space that put a fresh spin on home theaters. Oh, do tell. Wrapping up my list was the tour de force that was the Sound Room 10, a powerhouse convergence of audiovisual titans. Storm Audio and Gramani Systems collaborated to champion the future of audio over IP. Their showcase was an ode to the belief that not only is this tech real, but it also revolutionizes the setup and installation of intricate home theaters without cutting corners on sound quality. But it wasn't just about sound. Row 1 handled the plush seating, Seymour's screens projected vivid visuals, and Barco projector worked in harmony with the Mad VR NV processor, giving that touch of HDR tone mapping. Sound familiar? Yeah, we just talked about it two seconds ago. It's the same winning combo we saw in the Trinov room. And mirroring a popular trend, a Kaleidoscape media server took charge of content, dishing out stunning 4K HDR video and the enveloping embrace of Dolby Atmos around sound. Diving deeper, the demo was an elegant dance of 23 speakers with six robust subwoofers set in a 11.6.6 array. Forget the usual messy cables. Here, a single cat cable did all the magic. The star of the show, though, was Storm. Audio's freshly unveiled ISP Evo, a 32-channel AOIP preamp processor marking its entrance as the first all-digital immersive audio processor at Cedia. All this was seamlessly integrated with Gramani System's whopping 16,800-watt 23-channel speaker system. I gotta admit, Choosing a favorite was like picking a favorite child, right? Alcons delivered a visceral experience during the John Wick clip. Every gunshot wasn't just heard, it was felt. Raw and powerful. Trinov, on the other hand, swayed with smooth bass and a well-rounded audio delivery. But Sound Room 10? <sighs> like the best of both worlds, guys, culminating into one harmonious experience. And not to sway my judgment or anything, but sitting in row one's ultra comfy chairs certainly sweetened the deal. All things considered, Sound Room 10 for me takes the crown. It was the best in show, hands down. Cedia was a blast, guys. Big thanks to everyone who took a moment to show me the magic you've got cooking out there. It's wild how tech is just launching us into tomorrow, isn't it? I'm laying down a prediction, though. Huge screens and epic sound are going to be the new norm. Think about it. 100 plus inch screens and full on immersive soundscapes right in your living rooms. Doesn't that sound too, too good to be true? But it's coming. It's coming. Massive props to all the companies and the legends behind the scenes for giving us a peek into what's next in the world of sound and video. Cheers, guys. Now, hey, if you've got a minute, check out the live session Giles and I did. We basically took a deep dive into the entire show and spilled all of our thoughts on it. Link will be down below. Guys, thank you for hanging out with me. So a little update on what's going on. I know you guys noticed the name change and all that. As much as I geek out over CDs and hi-fi, I'm evolving. I'm thinking bigger, not just, you know, the CD hi-fi stuff, but the whole entertainment spectrum. Think tech, audio video vibes, lifestyle, and, you know, some crazy uh, theories I have too. I am I'm so excited for the journey through 2024 with all of you. And of course, everybody who joins along here and now. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to make love to that like button. You gotta make love to it, Bill. To make love? Subscribe to the channel to keep it growing and ring the bell to get notified every time a new video is born. With all that said and done, I'll see you on the next one, friends. Take care.